The VHF radio spectrum used for civil aviation is called airband or aircraft band. The lower band. The lower part of the band, from 108.00 to 117.950 MHz, is split into 200 channels, spaced 50 kHz apart, which is used for NAVIDs. Frequencies in the range of 108.000 to 112.000 MHz are used for ILS and terminal DORs, while frequencies in the range of 112.000 to 117.950 MHz are used for low and high VORs. The upper band upper part of the band from 118.00 to 136.975 MHz is split into 760 channels, spaced 25 kHz apart, for voice communication. Transmitting in Amplitude Modulation Your VHF radio uses amplitude modulation, so you're actually transmitting to ATC in amplitude modulation, similar to the amplitude modulation radio in your car. Overriding Signals Amplitude modulation transmissions allow stronger stations to override weaker ones. This means air traffic controller can talk over a transmitting aircraft or an aircraft with a stuck mic. Capture effect. Additionally, um doesn't suffer from the capture effect found in FM. Capture effect is the complete suppression of the weaker signal. When an FM radio receives signals are nearly equal in strength or are fading independently, the receiver may switch from one to the other. This means that a nearby aircraft could inadvertently override ATC. Transmission range. A typical transmission range of an aircraft flying at 4,500 feet is about 100 miles. At 35,000 feet, it's about 200 miles. Bending signals. VHF radio range is slightly better than line of sight because the radio waves are weakly bent back toward Earth by the atmosphere. Just because you can't see the tower or RCC you're transmitting to, doesn't mean you can't reach it. It was a pleasure sharing these 9 interesting facts about your airplane's VHF radio with you. Remember that the VHF radio plays a critical role in aviation communication and safety, and knowing how it works can help you better understand the air traffic control system.